idea for today's video actually came to me as a suggestion from one of my viewers. So, if you have a topic that you'd like to see me make into a video, let me know in the comment section below. Today, we're going to talk about blood flow through the heart and also blood flow to the cardiac muscle itself. The heart has four distinct chambers, the right atrium, the left atrium, the right ventricle, and the left ventricle. When the right ventricle contracts, it sends deoxygenated blood from the heart out to the lungs. When the left ventricle contracts, it sends blood from the heart out to the rest of the body. Cardiac blood flow occurs in two distinct phases. Diastole, which is when the ventricles are filling with blood, and systole, which is when the ventricles are contracting. When this occurs in the heart, systole or diastole occur in both sides of the heart at the same time. So, if the right ventricle is in diastole, the left ventricle is also in diastole. However, for this video, we're going to explain it from the perspective of any erythrocyte here, as he enters the right atria, travels through the right side of the heart out to the lungs, back to the left side of the heart, and then out to the body. Deoxygenated blood from the body returns to the heart through the inferior or superior vena cava back to the right atrium. When the right ventricle is in diastole, it's relaxed, and blood is able to pass from the right atrium to the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve. The tricuspid valve is named so because it has three leaflets. Before the tricuspid valve closes, the atrium contracts, which ejects additional blood from the right atrium into the right ventricle and is also known as the atrial kick. The apex of both the right and left ventricles are covered with a lattice-like structure called trabeculae carniae also known as Rathke's bundles, and they are muscular bands that are covered with endocardium. When systole occurs in the right ventricle, blood is forced through one of the two semilunar valves, known as the pulmonic valve, to the pulmonic trunk. It then travels up the pulmonic trunk to the right and left pulmonary arteries. At the right and left pulmonary arteries, the deoxygenated blood travels to the lungs where it's oxygenated and then travels to the left atrium through the right and left pulmonary veins. Oxygenated blood returns from the lungs to the heart through the right pulmonary vein and the left pulmonary vein which empty into the left atrium. When the left ventricle is in diastole and it's relaxed, blood passes from the left atrium through the mitral valve, which is named because of its resemblance to the Pope's mitre, into the left ventricle. Prior to the closing of the mitral valve, the left atrium contracts, causing the atrial kick, and then closes. The left ventricle is much more muscular because it needs to be able to pump blood to the entire human body. When systole occurs in the left ventricle, blood is forced through the other semilunar valve, known as the aortic valve, up through the ascending aorta, where it's then distributed through the entire body by various arteries. There are three arteries that branch off the top of the aortic arch. The first one is the brachiocephalic trunk, which supplies blood to the brain and to the head. The right subclavian artery also branches off of the brachiocephalic artery, 
supplying blood to the right arm. The left common carotid artery supplies blood to the left half of the neck and the left half of the face. And the left subclavian artery supplies blood to the left arm. The lower extremities are supplied with blood from the descending aorta. Blood is supplied to the heart by coronary arteries and removed by coronary veins. During systole, when the heart is contracted, the coronary arteries are unable to perfuse, so most perfusion occurs during diastole when the muscle is relaxed. There are two main coronary arteries, and that's the right main coronary artery and the left main coronary artery, which branch off just after the aortic valve. The left main supplies blood to the lateral wall of the left atrium and the lateral wall of the left ventricle. Then it actually splits into two separate arteries. The left anterior descending, which supplies blood to the anterior septum and to the anterior wall of the left ventricle, and the left circumflex, which provides blood to the atrium and also to the posterior wall of the left ventricle. A myocardial infarction that results as a blockage in the left main artery is known as a widowmaker because it shuts off blood supply to the entire left side of the heart. The right coronary artery supplies blood to the right atrium and also to the right ventricle. The right marginal coronary artery branches off and supplies blood to the anterior wall of the right ventricle. The posterior descending artery supplies blood to the posterior wall of the right ventricle. The inferior wall of the heart can either be left or right coronary artery dominant, meaning that if the patient is left coronary artery dominant, the blood supply to the inferior wall comes from the left coronary artery. This can only be determined through an angiogram. If you guys would like to learn more about cardiac blood flow, check out the links in the description. Also, don't forget, send me your video ideas and have a great day.